now we are going to see about what are the factors which are affecting the performance of the centrifugal pumps in the routine centrifugal pump operation we are continuously monitoring the pump operation llf we are conducting blue collision feel we are checking during the routine field round so any abnormality persist we are identifying through llf and routine field visit and we are rectifying the same to avoid the pump damage during this we should identify the efficiency point of view also in order to gain the energy avoid the energy dissipation in the losses that is wastage of energy we should be avoided in the llf we will check the any abnormal noise from the pump or bearing or motor or any leakages of the flanges or the seals or gland so what we'll do if any gland leakages in gland packing drop wise water will be came out come out it is the allowable in order to ensure the gland packing healthiness if we over tight that so gland packing will get damage and smoke will come out so if this cannot be avoided it is the allowable drop by drop leakage in the gland packing in case of mechanical seal it should be completely avoided there is no leak from the seal so in this picture we can see the water is completely splashing out from the gland or the mechanical seal in case of hazardous liquid like ammonia or carbamate solution or this chemicals acids sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid that and all it should don't come out from the any of the seal we should immediately isolate the leak stop the pump and isolate the suction discharge valve and we want to drain it completely in case of water will prolong if it, there is no opportunity to attend this issues but it will cause the efficiency loss that is due to this splash definitely discharge pressure will slightly come down and the flow also will come down it will definitely affect the efficiency and there will be the direct losses in the energy so what should we do we should in case of gland packing we should tighten it or it should we should replace the gland packing in case of seals definitely we should stop the pump isolation go for maintenance replace the seal or we should service the seal and we should completely arrest the leak it is a first one it is only mentioned here cause this cause will issue this problem that is the effect and what are the action we should take next to one normally what we will do will not require the complete discharge flow which is pumping from the pump so will what will do will discharge the discharge valve we will throttle will throttle it will pinch it so what will happen due to this so the liquid will be get internal circulate and there is a dissipation of the energy loss because we are not completely drawing the liquid definitely if we throttle the discharge current will be come down but energy losses will be there due to that extra liquid which we are pinching it will be get circulate and it will be the increasing the liquid temperature and if it more throttle the discharge valve definitely cavitation will can occur so with this can causes the pitting in the impeller and the casing lead to damage also so we should don't throttle the discharge or then what we'll do to avoid that we will put the spill back or the recirculation again back to the suction so this is also what will happen that liquid we are pumping and again returning back to the suction so it will cause us the energy loss there is energy loss due to the internal circulation we can call is and rise in temperature also we can occur so energy loss will be happen so and then one more thing 
if there is any abnormal noises in the bearing in the pump bearing or motor bearing definitely there will be the losses due to friction so it will be not no loss normally it will become less than 5% only but even though we should be identify and we should rectify to avoid the shaft failure or to avoid the imbalance in the pump and the motor which will create the issues in the shaft impeller and seal and gland also if it is there is a abnormal noise from the bearing it will create the vibration which causes this, those issues so how we can mitigate how we can control the energy loss which are getting affected by throttling or recirculation so definitely we want to reduce the pumping rate so in order to reduce the pumping rate what we can do we can reduce the speed of the pump if it is a vfd driven definitely we can go for reduce the speed by the frequency control with the help of the affinity law the discharge flow q is called discharge flow n is called speed of the pump it is directly proportional to it head is proportional to square of the speed power is q power of the speed so by this we can calculate the required speed for the required flow that is q1 by q2 is equal to n1 by n2 q1 is the unknown flow both are flow, known flow q1 is the new flow we want to achieve q2 is the existing flow so n1 is the new speed we want to achieve so n1 will be the unknown parameter so by this q1 by q2 into n2 will get the n1 so that n1 speed we can set in the vfd drive to achieve the rocket flow so by this we can avoid the throttling of the discharge and by achieving by reducing that speed we can open the discharge valve fully and the circulation also we can spill back also we can completely isolate so in this process in the speed reducing the speed we should keep in mind head also you just directly proportional to square of the speed so if you reduce the speed discharge flow also will come down and our head also discharge head also head discharge pressure also will come down so we, we keep in mind we should don't go below the discharge pressure of the required discharge pressure for example if your pump is operating at the 5 bar so requirement is 4 bar so by reducing the speed discharge flow also will come down so it should don't go below 4 bar so we should maintain the discharge pressure also that only will mention in that reduce speed flow and discharge pressure also will get reduced so by this you can calculate the power so difference between the both power it is your gain what is the gain we can calculate easily by this affinity law formula and in case if the vfd is not there so we can replace the motor that is we can increase the number of pool if number of pool is increased definitely the speed of the motor also will get reduce for example that speed is equal to 120 f by p right so 120 into f is 50 hertz for example divided by two pool two pool if you put two so 120 f by p will be give 3000 rpm so if we put four pool so 120 into 50 divided by 4 will get 1500 rpm so 120 f by 120 into 50 divided by 6 pool motor for 6 if we divided by will get 1000 rpm so if we increase the number of pool of the motor for the same capacity will reduce the speed of the motor and def directly pump is directly coupled driven so we can reduce the speed of the pump so it will reduce the discharge required flow in the same case we should don't lose the discharge pressure it should don't go down than the requirement because if speed is increased in last this last slide we seen that speed is decreased definitely the discharge pressure also will get come down 
and it should don't affect the nphs available what do you mean nphs available net positive suction hit available required is there available is there required means the pressure head should be greater than the vapor pressure of the liquid that is required available means it should not pressure is required to avoid cavitation in the pump it is called available so one more thing if the pump is driven by the pulley it is directly coupled we can reduce the speed by changing the increasing the pull of the motor in case of coupler in pulley driven also we can do this and we can increase the diameter of the pump pulley or the motor pulley definitely we will reduce the speed of the pump this also we can reduce the power and the third one is we can reduce the impeller diameter so by the affinity law q is directly proportional to diameter of the impeller flow is directly proportional to di diameter of the impeller head is directly proportional to diameter square of the impeller power is directly proportional to cubic power of the diameter of the impeller so in the same case we should we can reduce the diameter of the impeller which will reduce the pumping rate discharge flow and the discharge head and in this case we should don't trim the impeller greater than 25 percentage of 20 percentage of the impeller that is trimming can do with less than 20 percentage we should don't go above 20 percentage of the original dia for example 100 mm impeller means we can trim it up to 75 mm only we should don't go 74 or 70 mm we should don't go why because efficiency will be drastically come down and head head reduction will be drastically come down below 50 percent so which will affect your discharge pressure required pressure and internal circulation will be more and it will be cavitation will be more and the impeller pitting and casing pitting will be more and energy loss will be also more compared to energy loss your pump will get life will get come down so you should don't trim the impeller greater than 20 percentage of this original dia now we will see about 